Hey! Almost, almost missed the landings on there. I, uh, there's a book out there that I bought years and years ago. It's off a YouTuber. This uh, guy's got a, a, a knack for logomaki. Logomaki is a fancy way of saying flapping your lips. Anyway, so he wrote a book, and, and I have the PDF version of his book. And uh, I did a search. It's how I'm able to find words and how uh, someone is able to define or not define something. And I'm going to define the term, and I've done this before, but I've never made a video with an elaborate, detailed expounding upon the word. The ancient Greek word is kora. The word in English is field. Right? Field. And I've said specifically that a field is an ether perturbation modality, which, of course, it is. Anyway, getting to this guy's book, and uh, he uh, makes some mentions, and I'm going to give some quotes from his book. And uh, he's a thinker. He's not very bright, but he is a thinker, and that's good. And he at least recognizes that quantum is bunk, and these mathematicians are not actual scientists. They are uh, quantum magicians. He uh, calls them something else, which I won't say. Um, but there's 761 times, which I'm using Adobe Acrobat Pro, I can search in this guy's book how many times he used the word field. And I hate to say that I went through all 761 occurrences. And uh, he does a really detailed uh, look at fields. He, he points out all the countless errors of these uh, fools of quantum and Feynman and the rest. And he does a, a great job of that. But he himself never defines the word field. <laughs> so 761 times. And uh, I'm going to give you a quote from his book here. The word field is defined strictly as a concept. No one has the authority to use it as a physical entity or medium. Okay, well, that's, 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 that's interesting. Mm, okay. Um, well, the medium is the ether, of course. And as I've said before, there, throughout all of history, only ever been two postulations for the foundation, foundation of cosmic mechanics. One has been particleism or atomism. You know, Mother Nature is just this crazy chick with a calculator and a bag of magic particles. The other one's the ether. There have only ever been those two positives. You can't explain the universe um, with, uh, with particles. It's, it's not possible. There's only one fundamental particle anyway. An electron is a unit of dielectric induction. All free neutrons become protons after 17 minutes. All scientists agree upon this, which means there's only one fundamental particle. Now, since an atom, which is true, is 99.99999% empty space, basically like a large empty balloon with this super tiny pinpoint nucleus in there, it's like, well, what? makes up uh, the volume of the balloon. Well, every atom is just a dynamo. That's just magnetodielectricity. And then he, in his book, points out something that I've pointed out over and over again, that these uh, fools of quantum and these so-called physics... Well, I have a PhD. I'm a PhD uh, professor of uh, physics. They never define a field. You ask, a, ask one of those uh, PhD guys, one of those uh, stooges of academia, and he'll say, well, a field is, uh, is a region. It's lines of force. Well, lines is an abstraction. A line of what? Force is something done upon something else. It's performed. That's an, an action, kind of like smiling or happiness. You can't say a field is lines. Well, it's energy. So, well, you can't define energy. What is energy? Well, energy is sheer potential. Well, potential is another concept like force. So what are you saying when you say potential? These people engage in circular reasoning. It's just like a dog chasing its tail. They'll never tell you what a field um, is. Uh, anyway, he points uh, this out in his book. And, uh, you know, that is commendable, of course. Um, you know, field is not a property of space. Space has no properties. I'm quoting myself now, not him. You know, a field is, of course, not physical. It can't be physical. A physical object has a field, but that's because all things are physical. All things are energy bundles and generate electrostatic acceleration. Um, there's only one fundamental particle, and there are uh, compounds of that fundamental particle. Everything is a compound of hydrogen, for example. There's a reason why we see galactic jets are also called astrophysical jets. 
at the uh, apices of geomagnetic precession, which is just the extrapolation of the interior geometry of a donut or a torus. This uh, golden apple, of course, is nothing but an oblate torus. We actually have geomagnetic precession at the... Uh, and this not follows nothing other than the right-hand rule. We actually have the magnetic toroid. We have the increasing uh, dielectric uh, hyperboloid or the hourglass shape. The both are the superimposition of the conjugate geometry of the universe. And together they form a holos. There's a great, uh, there's what we get the word hologram, the Greek word holos, meaning whole or totality. But totality, of course, comprises principle and attribute because everything in the universe, even to the most simplex, like the agathon or the absolute, has an attribute because nothing can be or nothing can be known or nothing can be declared of anything because it must have at least one attribute to be known or acknowledged or anything at all, like light and illumination. Light and illumination are principle and attribute, but light and illumination are just one thing and one thing only, of course. Um, anyway, I'd uh, like to do a little uh, quote uh, from him. 761 occurrences in his book where he talks about the word field, but he never defines field. Um, structural shortcomings of the field. Field is not a portion. Uh, here we go. So, I'm going to read a quote from his book. So what is the lame brain person going to do? The iron filings around a magnet to the empty space point to the empty space between the moon and the earth. Here I present an analysis of different aspects of the word field. I show that a field is not a physical object. It may not be used as a medium or as a baseball bat. If, as I argue, a field is not a physical object, every scientific paper written since Faraday invented this magical word that treats the word field as an object and therefore is summarily declined and uh, declared null and void, excuse me. The word field is uh, summarily declared null and void. Okay, so he completely eliminated out the word field. <laughs> well, when you do that, you're just left with atomism, and atomism is untenable. Everything is fields, and fields are not particles. You can't null and void out field. It's impossible. You have to posit something before you can negate it, too, by the way, so that makes it doubly impossible. I will go further and propose that anybody who uses... This is great. This is where he delves into the realm of epic stupidity. I will go further and propose that anyone who uses the word field to explain a phenomena of nature should be kicked out of science. It gets even better. The word field belongs exclusively in religion. <laughs> so, he just declared the word field like uh, talking about unicorns and leprechauns, and he says it belongs within the spheros of religion. Okay, since there's only ever been two postulates for cosmic mechanics, one is the ether, i.e. fields, and the other one is atomism. He, throughout his entire book, he rejects atomists. He never defines the word field. And then he completely destroys... Even though he uses the word field 761 times... He's always talking about field this, field that, field. He keeps using the word field in his book hundreds and hundreds of times, 761 exactly. But then he concludes the word field is just like a religious word, like, like the Holy Ghost. Or <laughs> so if you really thought that about the word field, you wouldn't use it 670. You see the self, you see the inconsistency in this sort of nonsense. That would be if I like made my uh, living on something and then all of a sudden I rejected it had ever existed and it was nonsense to begin with. You can't write a book about fields and then say field is uh, just a crazy conceptual word that is, uh, belongs in the halls of religion. It's just, that's untenable. That's highly illogical and, and unintelligent. Um, Specifically, as I've said over and over again hundreds of times, a field is an ether perturbation modality, but I could actually make a subset to that and say that a field is a regional ether torsion. But I mean, fields are circular or transverse, but there's only one conjugate binary in the universe, the magnetic and the dielectric. And the magnetic and dielectric are one thing. The magnetism is the extrinsic attribute of the loss of energy inertia that finds the ether torsion stress restraint that we call the dielectric. 
and then it manifests as a 90 degree torsional aspect of voluminous centrifugal divergence because uh, everything is force in motion, inertia and acceleration. The, there's only one law in the universe. Only one law. Only one. Pressure mediation. The only one. But there's only one field. The ether torsion, stress or strain in a different modality is toroidal and centrifugal divergent and the other one is centripetal and convergent. This is where you actually have discharges into counter space. Dollard has said this. Lightning is a discharge into counter space. We think lightning's a manifestation, and to our eyes, lightning is superficially a manifestation because light appears, it manifests. But what it is, it's actually an electrostatic discharge into counter space. And dollars, those are dollars' exact words, and he's 100% correct. Magnetism is the complete opposite of that. That, that loss of energy or inertia manifests as this toroidal bloom of, uh, of uh, force. And the after effect of that divergent uh, centrifugal uh, force and motion um, conjugate geometry of the dielectric, which we call magnetism, is space, the after effect. The volume of a torus, yeah, of that divergent magnetic field is a torus, that volume, which then gives rise to mass and magnitude. When you have mass and magnitude, you have time. Time doesn't exist. Time is just a measure of mass and magnitude. But we can't deny fields, I mean... I, it's just so ludicrous this guy uses the word field 761 times and he just says, oh, field is just like a crazy concept. It belongs in the world of religion. Well, says who? You just got done using it hundreds and hundreds. You see, society is unilluminated. Well, this guy is superficially smart that wrote this book. He's ultimately extremely unsmart, which I know that's not a word. He points out all the inconsistencies and stupidities of the cult of quantum and these, uh, these mathematical uh, existentialist uh, myo myopic fools. He accurately points out their inherent contradictions. But then he himself, in his own book, makes like the biggest self-contradiction imaginable. And it just shows you where humanity is at in its nature of understanding. Everything is divinely simple. And by divinely, I don't mean godly. I'm not referring to religion at all. I'm a Pythagorean or a Platonist. There's something completely opposite to religions and something completely opposite to nihilism or atheism. Atheism, by the way, is not about the denial of God. That's not what the word means, atheos. It means the denial of uh, ontological substrates underneath phenomena. True atheism is called metaphysical atheism. This, this guy, by the way, is a hardcore self-proclaimed atheist, which I don't care. But that's like saying there's no hand underneath the sock puppet. You know, there's no strings pulling the sock. The, we don't have to have God or no God for that. It's, atheism has nothing to do with God. True atheism doesn't. It has to do with the denial of, of, of noumena. It has to do with the denial of things that are underneath phenomena. Uh, uncaused principles which are antecedent to manifestations and phenomena. Because people like this can't define, by his own admission, he can't define the word energy, he can't define the word field. He rightfully so and accurately attacks, you know, the physicists and the quantum weirdos and their, uh, their silly religion of mathematics, which is merely descriptive but not explicative. It doesn't explain anything. Math has never explained anything. It defines and describes, but it never, ever, ever explains, and it's completely irrational. See, he's accurate in the way he attacks them, but he himself ultimately doesn't have any answers. It's easy to attack, you know, ludicrous insanity, but ultimately you have to stand somewhere on some non-shaky ground where you have the wisdom to declare this is what is this is the way it is it's like here's why all this stuff is crazy and you give tons of examples and proofs which he does which you know that's laudable but he doesn't stand anywhere because he doesn't understand anything so i'm ultimately not attacking this guy but uh, i'm pointing out incredible shortcomings and he just doesn't understand but that's okay um, the people that are not okay are the people that don't understand, but 
think that they do and tell everybody else that they do and they just make up nonsense. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a good day.